Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Michi Makes Up. Today I want to show you guys my cream blush collection. Um, summer has arrived and I know in a number of places up in Canada and the States, we've been experiencing a heat wave. And so I was thinking, what can we do? Could we make a video or a series of videos that relates to summer makeup? easy to put on and it feels nice on the skin so it doesn't give you that feeling of being too heavy um, and I thought looking around in my collection I've actually accumulated uh, a number of cream blushes from different brands so what timing perfect we'll start out the first summer series makeup video um, talking about cream blushes and I have here the most recent addition to my cream blush um, collection it's not really a collection it's it's just you know, one-offs here and there from different brands. But the most concentrated, um, from Lisa Eldridge, uh, these are her enlivening blushes. And uh, you know, when I look at them, and when I, you know, squeeze a product out, it really feels like using acrylic paints. I am not a painter, but I've definitely seen, you know, the tubes of paint that uh, my friends who are painters and artists would use and yeah it just really reminds me of that so we'll definitely take a look at these today and then also I'm just going to hold as many of these in my hands as I can these are the other cream blushes that I have and as you can see they're from different brands most of them are just one off so I have a Chantecaille cream blush and another from Rare Beauty then we have the Westman Atelier Merit, there's also Milk Makeup, and then I have two cream blushes from Stila. These are the oldest cream blushes I have in my collection. I am about to declutter them, so I definitely want to spend some time to talk about them. And really, uh, these this brand of cream blushes is what gave me the confidence to try other brands' cream blushes because they are very, very versatile. With cream products, if they're designed so that you can use them on your face, you can use them on your eyes as well, and you can use them uh, most likely on your lips too. Oh, and as I was talking about this, how could I forget I have a series or a number of cream products from Natasha Denona as well. So let me get those out and show you guys too. For Natasha Denona, I have here her large diamond and blush palette in Daria. I have talked about this palette no less than 10 times in um, 2020. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite face palettes that I have. And then her Bloom Palette, Blush and Glow, as well as her Face Glow Bronze Cheek Palette. This is perfect for summer, actually, now that we're stepping into the season. Very divided reviews when this came out. Um, I think it works for some skin tones and not others. So it can be quite limited, but I will swatch it. She has kind of two new formulas with this face palette. Um, there's the Bounce Cream Glow, kind of as a base to give you an all over glow on your cheeks. And then this Bounce Cream Blush is what's gonna help give you that color. It works for my skin tone. I have neutral undertones. So it works for me um, in the winter time, in the summer as well, and I could be another whole shade darker and it would still work for me. So I don't know if that helps to know that I have neutral undertones. As for the Bloom Palette, and the Bloom Palette I think was much more well received. Um, this is very universal light all the way to deep skin tones can use the shade and it is super pigmented um, these other products in here very complimentary so i think between the two this one is definitely uh, more universal and more people enjoy the bloom palette and then here's her large six pan face palette you don't have to use all the products in here to create a look, but if you do, you're gonna be like a disco ball, like the most beautiful disco ball. And I mean that in a good way, so I really like this palette. Um, why don't we start first with the oldest cream blushes in my collection. So these are the Stila Convertible Color. It's called Convertible Color because you can use it uh, not only on your cheeks, but your eyes and your lips as well. The shade I have here is Lilium. It is a nude pink. A makeup artist used this on me and she used it 
below uh, my setting powder and it just gave me this overall glow and I thought it was the most natural looking yet you know you look like you have makeup on but it was just very natural very soft on the eyes but still give you an effect of like glamour and so I absolutely love this shade and this swatched on my arm is actually a lot cooler than I remember it uh, but this is really really easy to use because you can't apply too much it's pigmented but because of this you know nude pink um, depending on your skin tone you really can't go too heavy-handed unless you keep adding on but yeah very versatile and I've had many many good years uh, using this now I am decluttering this because I've had this for several years now so I haven't been using it and here's the other shade that I have peony this is a mauve shade but also very easy to wear very neutral This definitely gives me winter vibes or fall vibes and that's why I tend to, at the time when I was still using it, that's when I tend to take this blush out. So they're very pigmented and you can imagine if you were in a pinch, you know, you didn't have the time, you just take one of these and you could get a makeup look out of it. Especially if you're not somebody that used foundation, uh, you just want some color, these are perfect. And the next oldest cream blushes that I have is from the Diamond and Blush Palette. So this here, this cream blush, has been re-released in this year's mini, mini Love Palette, I want to say. So it was early this year. This is a much brighter pink and it is very, very pigmented. You don't need a lot goes a long ways. And with all of these blushes we're gonna look at today, I do not have any issues with the stain power of these products. Um, I've worn them underneath setting powder on top. It stays just as well, just as long. They don't come apart. I wear them for the entire day and they look still beautiful. Um, I've worn most of these blushes several times, all day long, and some of them I've worn them out. Um, Steel, of course, have, you know, I've tested these for the longest and they just have really amazing stain power. And one where I most recently were outside for an entire evening is the Westman Atelier. This is Minette. Uh, wonderful and this one has like sparkly specks in it too it's fairly emollient and never truly dries down but yeah it just it just stays on unless you you know do something to wipe it off you're gonna have that color on your face for the whole day and that really applies to any of these uh, products as well so when we talk about these cream blushes my goal isn't really to rank them in terms of stain power or quality i think quality wise they are fairly similar um, if we look at maybe ingredients that's where you'll see the differences but i'm more interested in showing you guys the uh, swatches some comparisons and maybe some of them have like a nuanced texture to it. So if you were looking to get more cream blushes or to get into cream blushes, that you would find this video helpful. So moving on from the Natasha Denona Diamond and Blush Palette, the next one is the Bloom Palette. And this is gonna be very pigmented. And if you have a deeper skin tone, I definitely recommend the Bloom Palette. As for Natasha Denona's bronze palette, these formulations are different. They're called Bounce. They are cream, but they're not quite as emollient as um, her other or previous cream products. And this here is just supposed to give you like a bronzy effect. You're not going to get that much color just from this. You do have to rely on the other two powder products here. Um, to give you that, you know, all over bronzy glow. Next I have Rare Beauty, and this is in the shade Nearly Apricot. Definitely has some corally orange vibes to it, and I think you can see through the camera, it also is the most sheer in terms of, you know, application. 
So if you wear this without foundation or any, you know, any kind of pigment, just your natural skin tone, uh, your natural pigments will come through. And so because it's not like a heavy cream texture, it also feels really lightweight on your skin. Next I have from Milk. This is in the shade Work. And this is also a fairly sheer cream blush. I'm putting a second application here. Milk is more buildable than Rare Beauty. Um, just because of the how it feels. Both are creamy, lightweight, but I think this has more of a um, buildable cream texture, whereas this remains like very, very emollient. And then we have Westman Atelier in the shade Minette. Of all the cream blushes we'll look at today, this is the only one that has kind of reflective specks in it and that's kind of metallic. It is, in terms of emollients, not quite as slick as Rare Beauty, but I do think it's quite similar to Milk and maybe it's even, maybe it's even slicker than, than Milk. Um, I love this. It is the lightest that I have of all the cream blushes. It wears really beautifully. Then next, I have the Chantecai Hydrating Gel Cream Blush and this is in the shade Happy. This is also the product where it comes out of squeeze tube. Oh, press too hard here. And I think because of the ingredient and the fact that this is supposed to be or marketed as hydrating, it actually has a cooling effect. So none of the products we looked at today has any kind of like sensation when you apply it, but this one has a very noticeable cooling effect. And I actually really love this too. Um, it is possibly, if not the coolest, it is just as cool as that Stila color. And it just gives you that really like pretty pop of pink. It's cool and it's bright. So um, I find it very versatile. This is also something you can build, but because it's so light and sheer with one application, um, you're never in the territory of putting on too much all at once. Then we have Merit Beauty. Beverly Hills is the shade name. And it's also fairly sheer, but buildable. And I think Beverly Hills, um, also with Milk, they're fairly similar in terms of shade color. I wouldn't say it's a dupe, but I don't think you need both. If you have one and you're trying to decide on the other, um, I would avoid and get a different shade from the other brand. Then finally, we have the Lisa Eldridge Enlivening Blushes. I got all of these when she launched them just a short while ago. Unfortunately, like most of her uh, new products when she launches, it is all sold out at this time, but she will restock them, so I'm looking forward to that. The first shade I'm going to swatch for you guys is Island Glow. And some of these, depending on which shade, it can be quite difficult to get the product out. I really have to put some strength into it. And with these products, you only need just a little bit. For me, they have a little bit of a learning curve too because of how pigmented they are and how concentrated that pigment is. Um, just this, I think now that I've gotten all of that on my arm would probably be enough. So why don't I show you what I mean? Just with a finger. We'll see if we can get a cheek glow here. And I mean, if I had more than that, I'd have too much. So you only need like a little speck and you can of course go back and get more to layer on top. But this would be enough blush for me. Maybe a tad brighter, but this looks good. Going back for an additional application. This is more than enough. 
you know, this is perfect. And I'm also having to really get squeeze really hard. Okay, there it is. Now I've got too much. So this looks like it's purple or plum color, but once it goes on and you blend it out, it becomes like um, a flush look that is more red than purple once it's blended out. And it's actually really pretty. Um, Lisa Eldridge described, or she talked about how she came up with a shade specifically from how you would look after going on a hike. Or she was remembering a time when she went on a hike that kind of flushed cheek look she'd get from that exercise. And basically that's what Mount Walk is in reference to. Next is Pink Poetry, another bright shade. So these really bright shades is definitely a departure from all the other cream blushes that I have. And that's why I was so drawn to many of the shades. I really wanted to try something different and perhaps out of my comfort zone. And finally, we have Pink Soap. This is the most nude color and most wearable and also the easiest to get the product to come out. <laughs> I think we're going to find that this shade is fairly similar to the ones up here, perhaps even this one too from Milk. So there are all the cream blushes that I have, the swatches. The Stila convertible colors are the thickest uh, in terms of cream and while they're not it's not easy to go overboard with them uh, because of the shade. If you were to use a brighter color from this line, uh, it definitely has a steeper learning curve for sure. Um, and you would have to watch out for putting on too much um, all at once. And then followed by, I think, Natasha Denona is also very pigmented. I would say these ones have the most pigment. These ones in terms of texture from Stila is the thickest. And then after that, it would be followed closely by Natasha Denona in terms of like pigment and also the texture, the thickness. And then these ones here, all from the other brands. So we have um, Rare Beauty, Milk, Chantecaille, and uh, Westman, Westman Atelier, Chantecaille, and also Merit. These ones are all very light, sheer, very easy to use and has that and the shade too gives you that kind of like everyday look. And then for Lisa Eldridge, you know, she has those pops of color and then one really nice neutral here. For my other cheek, I like to put on a different uh, cream blush, but I'm gonna use a brush this time. You could also use a sponge. Um, I used to apply these Stila convertible colors with a sponge and it was it worked just as well. So let me see here. I'm gonna go with the Chantecaille because we've got something fairly warm and I just have some on my hand. I'm dabbing it with this brush here. This brush is from Sonia G's Kiaki brush set and it works really well with cream products. So that is the Cool Pink, and this is Island Glow. I'm going to apply a second layer. Why don't we find a lip color to go with both of these different cheek shades? You know, once you have them on your cheek, you can't really see the difference like that, obviously. And in person, well, in person you can probably see it, you can see it a bit more, but on camera here, it's more subtle. And I think I failed to mention though, that the um, product from Chantecaille actually does have like a little bit of a um, metallic sheen or shift to it. So previously I said Minette was the only one, but actually 
um, these two both have that kind of finish to it. Um, the rest of the products are truly satins or matte, if you will, and they don't have that glitter or metallic uh, shift. I'm gonna go with Suku's Comfort Live Fluid Glow in the shade 105. For highlight, I'm going to use Suku's Powder Blush Compact 102. I think you can still get this from Soft Ridges. I've definitely seen it around like as recent as a month ago, but I'm using this shade. And then before we go, I do want to talk a bit about where the products are made and their shelf lives. All of the Lisa Eldridge's uh, blushes are made in Italy and have a shelf life of 24 months. The Chantikai blush is the only one made in Japan, has a shelf life of 12 months. And all the Natasha Denona products are made in Italy, same with uh, Rare Beauty and also Westman Atelier. Shelf lives do vary. Um, we have these two, 18 months. This is 12 months. Rare Beauty and West Montelier are also 12 months. Then we have the Merit Beauty uh, Cheek Color. This is made in South Korea. And then with Milk, this is made in the States and has a shelf life of 12 months. So thank you guys for watching. This video is definitely different from my usual favorites video and review videos. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, and ring the bell to get notified every time new content is released. And let me know below if you are interested in any of these products, have been, or you have them, or you have recommendations for me. Uh, I'm definitely interested to know what you guys think. And uh, what I'm wearing on my eyes today is Viseart's Solstice Palette from their Petite Pro line. I am a huge fan of Viseart, so I'm taking my time to revisit some of their uh, eyeshadow palettes that I got uh, last year. And this one is part of two Petite Pro palettes they release. Um, the other one is called Midsummer, and it has more of like a mauve -y color story to it. This one is more earthy, but with that dual chrome shade right here. It kind of transforms what would be, you know, warm, earthy tones to kind of mauve -y and purple because of that shift. It's so beautiful. You can wear these as, you know, just everyday, really approachable looks all the way to something that's more dramatic like this. So the versatility is real with Viseart. Love them. I will see you guys very soon. Take care. Bye.